Welcome to my comprehensive home renovation tracking system built on Airtable. This system is designed to manage all the projects and tasks you're working on or thinking about doing. This workspace is perfect if you're a DIYer or home renovation enthusiast. It's also great if you're a general contractor or you do handyman jobs and you own your own business. Included in this workspace is a payment system to track how much everything costs. Plus, if you start taking on jobs for others, an invoicing system based on the supplies you purchase and the labor you put in. It also has a tools and supplies inventory that connects to your tasks and payments. I'll walk you through the system, so let's dive in. We start off with our customers. All home renovation jobs are done for someone, so the first step is identifying the person, aka the customer, even if the customer is you yourself. I grew up loving The Simpsons, so all the customers in this Airtable spreadsheet are Simpsons characters. So we start off with their basic information, like their first name, their last name, their contact information, like their email, phone, street address. Um, it also shows the projects and the number of projects that a customer has done or requested, as well as the individual tasks and the number of tasks related to that project. It also shows an expense total for how much the projects or tasks have, have cost, and they're also connected to payments. I'll, I'll get into projects, tasks, and payments in just a moment. So moving on, the next table is projects. Most home, home renovation projects can be quite complex. So after customers, the two core tables in this workspace are projects and tasks. But what's the difference? Projects can be thought of as large, a large one large bucket or a large series of tasks, such as renovate your bathroom or redo your kitchen. Tasks are individual pieces of work to be done connected to that project, such as if you're doing a renovate your bathroom, it could be an individual task could be install a toilet or reglaze your bathtub or re replace your mirror. Or if you're doing a, a kitchen redo as a project, individual tasks could be tear down kitchen cabinets or install new stove range and hood. So when we enter our projects, area, you can see that it's connected to a customer here. You can see that there's a project description, project notes. The notes can be as sparse or as detailed as you like. These are actual projects that I've done, by the way, so you can see all the notes connected to these projects. We have our project statuses, statuses start and end dates, project length. This is just a formula field and any tasks that are connected to the projects. You can also see the number of tasks connected to each project. So this one has four. You can also, projects are also connected to the supplies that are required and the total amount of expenses that you've purchased on supplies. Projects are also connected to labor as well as the total amount of labor and uh, expense totals, which are just the labor and supply costs uh, combined into an expense total. And you can also see how much revenue each project has made if you are working for clients. Next off, we'll move into the tasks area. So tasks, again, tasks are connected to customers. They're also connect connected to projects. There's also task description and notes. Again, the notes can be as sparse or as detailed as you like. There's also task statuses, start and end dates, task lengths, images. So you can see basically like um, you, can, you can show uh, before and after pictures documentation. So these are just, you know, dummy URLs, but if you need to show any payments or permits that you had to pull or any other paperwork that are connected to payments. Tasks also contain supplies required as well as the total amount of expenses that you spent on individual um, supplies. It also shows a projected how much, because there's often a difference between how much you project to spend versus what is the actual amount you're spending. Tasks are also connected to labor worked, as well as a total number of hours and then total expenses for the labor. And then there is also an expenses total, which combines the cost from labor with the cost from the supplies. There's also a revenue uh, based on how much you made if you do put in work for another person. So that's tasks. Moving on is uh, next. I'll, I'll skip the supplies by tasks because this table is a junction table that connects tasks with our supplies inventory. So let me talk about supplies inventory first. 
and then I'll, I'll return to the supplies by task table. So supplies inventory, this is your inventory of tools and supplies. So here you can see that you enter a supply name, you can enter measurements, you can enter, enter brand or aesthetics, and you can enter how many per how many quant quantities per box or package. So if you if you want to include all these details, click this little box, and then those details will will appear in the supply ID. So let me show you. If you unclick it, those details disappear. But if you reclick it, all those details reappear. So if you have certain things like ceiling fans, you know, if you want all the details included, just click that little box and all the minutia of those that granular details will appear. But if you don't want, you can unclick it. Okay, your supplies inventory can also show where you've purchased it from, what is the product type, so if it's like an appliance, building material, cleaning, electrical, everyday carry, meaning you carry it around in your tool bag every day, fasteners, furniture, lawn and garden, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can, this is a multi-select field, so you can select more than one, for instance. There's also a quantity in stock. So how many you currently have either in your tool shed or your garage. There's also a price per unit. So this is how much it costs like on the vendor's website and then price per plus sales tax. I live in Gardena, California, which has a high sales tax. So this will automatically multiply it. You can also include images, right? For this uh, grit sander is an image. And then you can also include a URL to, for instance, Home Depot, it, uh, if you wanna purchase it there. And then also the location in the store or on the website or in your tool shed, or if you have like a garage, where is it in your garage? Um, and then there is a handy, uh, automation that can run. So if, if you plan to use this particular tool, if you click the automation, it will run. You can see that it fired. Now let me go over to supplies by task and show you what happened. So when I click that automation, that sending belt, it automatically creates a new record so that you can use in a task. So let me assign this to a task. Say I'm building a chicken coop. Um, so I will assign it to that task. You can see that the automation automatically assigns it as you need at least one. If you need to update this, you can, you can say I needed three, for instance. Um, it shows how many quantity in stock. So I currently have zero. So this quantity to purchase, um, this is a formula that basically takes how many you need minus how many you have in stock. And then it gives you that. If it's greater than zero, then it will say need to purchase. But if it's zero or one or less than um, how many you have in stock, it'll say don't need right now. You can add notes. You can connect individual supplies by task to payments. And then it also has certain uh, roll up or look up fields over here. So let me show you one cool thing. If you need to purchase certain supplies, I've created a view over here that uh, groups it by the vendor. So this is the Home Depot vendor. Um, you can see that these, anything that has this field need to purchase, um, it, it'll basically tell you that you need to go out and purchase these supplies. So it has an image, it shows you where in the store, um, so you can easily navigate the store when you go there. It, it, it'll also show you the price per unit. It'll show you how many you need versus how many you have in stock equals how many you should purchase. So I need for these galvanized steel roof panels, I need to buy three of them. Um, so that's a pretty cool view. Next off, we, we will move to labor. So labor is basically how much work you put in for either a customer or, or how much work a vendor put in for you. Okay, so you see that um, labor is connected to vendors, they're connected to tasks, and you can insert a date, you can insert when you clocked in, when you clocked out, that will uh, add to a formula field which shows the total number of hours. If you wanna put in an hourly wage, you can. Um, the hourly wage will multiply times how many hours you put in and that will spit out this information right here in total hourly wages. But some vendors don't have an hourly wage and they just charge you a set fee. So if that's the case, you can enter a set fee here. And then the total amount of wages will calculate based on if the set fee or the total hourly wages are empty or not. And it'll spit out the number that's most appropriate. For labor type, you can also put in a type 
So for instance, if you're meeting with clients, if you're doing research or planning, demo or prep, if you're out shopping, if you're doing the actual work of building, or if you're doing cleanup, you can select these. And then you can, um, you can associate a labor with a payment. If for instance, you had to charge a vendor um, or a vendor is charging you. Next off, we'll go over to vendors. Vendors can also be thought of as companies. So there's the basic contact information like email, phone number. There's a description of services, the supplies that you can purchase from a vendor, the labor that uh, a vendor gave to you or that you got from them, total amount of labor that was charged, total hours that the vendor put in for you, and types of payments that a vendor made for you, as well as total amount, um, how much you've paid them. The final table is payments. Payments can both be invoices, meaning money going to you, or it can be payments, meaning money going to a vendor. So if it's an invoice, you enter a customer, like here, um, it, it'll give you an invoice due date, which basically is one month after the date that you did the work. Uh, conversely, if it's payment going to a vendor, then you would add in a, pay a vendor here and you would know that you are then paying a vendor instead of a vendor paying you. You can associate certain supplies by tasks with um, either a customer or a vendor. And then it'll show you, if you add in additional prices onto these supplies by tasks, say for instance, um, this one was $30 for this uh, Romex uh, electrical wire, then that these numbers will automatically calculate in how much the expenses for supplies were. You can also associate labor with a payment. So if you put on, for instance, I know Homer Simpson did six hours right here for $200. He also did two hours for $50, which adds up to $250. And then it'll give you an expense total. The cool thing is you can open a PDF invoice, which is connected to the extensions over here. And let me just open that real quick. So I'll show you that uh, on this invoice number 11, I, I clocked in six hours plus two hours, so eight hours total for an amount of 250. And I had to use these supplies for $12 and $30, and it gives me a total invoice of $292. I'll give you one more example. So this one, I did some work on putting in an additional row in a laundry room. So I know how, these are the total amount of hours I did. This is how much I charged. These are all the supplies I had to purchase. And then it gives me a total to charge the customer for $310. So that's the payments view. Finally, we'll go over to interfaces. So there's a couple different interfaces. So first is a search interface. If you wanna quickly search by any record type, uh, you can, so we, you can search by tasks, you can search by projects, you can search by labor, by supplies needed per task, you can search your supply inventory, you can search by payments, or you can search by customers or vendors. Um, so say for instance, in tasks, maybe I wanted to search for a task I did for Lisa Simpson, right? I would type in Lisa's name and you can see all the tasks done for Lisa, 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 Lisa. If you wanted to search into either, any of them, you can click in and you can see the work that you did for Lisa. Um, it has an image, it has the project it's associated with, task description, task notes, the time frame, payment details, supplies needed on this particular task, and then any labor you did. Let me show you one more example in tasks. So if maybe if I did some electrical work, I'll type in electrical. Um, yeah, I, I did some basement electrical for Maggie Simpson, looks like. So you can see the project, the task description, task notes, images of like, you know, I installed some new electrical box and then a three-way switch. You can see some of the work in the basement. You can see the time frame, payment details, supply details. You can see all the different supplies that I had to purchase for this particular job. And then all the labor I did for this particular job. Okay, the next interface is called all tasks. So all tasks, basically it shows all the different tasks that you've done. So there's a couple filters up here if you wanna filter by task status, for instance, only the tasks that are in progress. 
or only the tasks that have been declined, there's nothing there, or only the tasks that have been completed, or if you wanted to search by the task ID, for instance, electrical, let me see what pops up. Yep, you can see like the different electrical jobs I've done, um, or if the task date started after say, September 1st. Yep, so like I did this door, replace doorbell chime for Lisa Simpson. Okay, let me reset these filters. And then down here is high level statistics. So you can see how many tasks I've done total, how many have been completed, how many are still in progress, how many are impending, how many are upcoming. And then you can also see the tasks completed over time. So this gives a quick timeline of all the different jobs that, I, that I've done over the past couple months. Okay, up here is a cool little workspace for incomplete tasks. So this shows you can select the different tasks that you still need to complete. And this gives you a good workspace for, to plan and to do. So you can write notes here in the task notes. Say, for instance, you wanted to create a checklist, checklist of things to do, right? And then you could add details down here. For instance, run to Home Depot. And then you could mark them off as needed. Down here, you, if you have different supplies you need to purchase, you can add the records here. Say for instance, since this is a chicken coop, maybe I need additional lumber. So I'll type in some lumber and then I need, you know, additional two by fours or two by sixes. And then down here is additional labor work. So if I say, for instance, um, I worked uh, on this date, I can add those here. And then down here shows expense information, revenue information, documentation down here. Okay, and then the final uh, interface you can work on is update payments and invoices. So this is for more so reconciliation. If you're trying to reconcile like the payments that you made from to a vendor such as Home Depot, like you can track how many supplies you purchased from Home Depot. Um, so you can, you can show like all the supplies that you purchased you would wanna add here or any labor that you did for a vendor you can add here. So this is a cool little um, workspace to reconcile your payments or your invoices. Well, that concludes this uh, overview of my general contracting template. Um, if you enjoyed it, you can go to my website, which I'll leave down below in the link in the description area in this video. Uh, yeah, and, and if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Okay, thanks so much, appreciate it.